All right, welcome back. So in the last few videos, you've learned how this process of creating the time lapse exactly works. And in this video, we'll be learning about how to edit the time lapse. So you know now how to use your intervalometer and you know what settings to use. And finally, once you've done that, you'll get all these uh, shots, you know. So right now you're not kind of seeing the preview of these shots. That's because if I just, uh, you know, kind of hover my mouse here, or just click on properties rather, you'll see that this is dot NEF, which is for, I'm, I'm using a Nikon camera, so that's the extension for a RAW file. So it's advisable to shoot all these images in RAW and not in JPEG. Uh, that's because like, right, like how we'll be seeing right now, that we'll have to edit these photos in order to get the best out of them. That's why we shoot photos in the first place, like you know now. And when you're editing a RAW image, it's even better than editing a JPEG image. But of course, they kind of, you know, take up more space, uh, than a JPEG image. So just make sure that you have that enough space when you were shooting. So make sure you formatted your card, it's all empty, and then you do the shooting. But the bottom line is we get all these shots. So I took, you know, these 524 shots. And then what you have to do is, so I'm editing them in Lightroom. That's the one of the best softwares to do this process. So what I've done is I've just gone, and I've already done this process because this kind of takes a bit of time. So what I've done is I've just opened Lightroom, which is again a software by Adobe just like Photoshop and you just go to file and you click on import photos and videos then you go to the folder where all your time-lapse uh, shots are kept and then you just import them and you can see that I've got all these shots now and these are all raw files so now you can see how they look right so you know I can click on any one of them and start editing we just have to edit mainly one image and then we'll be syncing that uh, with the rest of the uh, images so you'll see how easy that is so I've just got uh, this particular image opened up, uh, you know, this was somewhere in between and I thought this would be a good shot to edit and sync to the rest of the images. So what we're going to do is we have this one of the images open up out of all the 524 images and then let's try to get the best out of this image. So, you know, the first thing I'm probably going to do is, um, you know, the exposure looks fine. Maybe just add a bit of contrast just to make it slightly pop out. Um, then I'm just going to slightly reduce the highlight so that we start to see more detail in the sky here, which is like we discussed before, this is very important. Uh, and this is one of the main reasons why we shoot images and not video, because you can see the moment I do that, just to just see how much of detail and the color in the sky just comes out. This wasn't possible like we saw when we were editing our video. And then this part is slightly darker, so I'm going to just raise the shadows and you can see that this just makes it look absolutely beautiful. Just the movement of three sliders has, you know, completely changed this image from this to this. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to increase the clarity. So once you increase the clarity, what you'll find is that, you know, everything just kind of becomes well more clear and sharper. So you can see that this looks fantastic. You know, this was the original. And the moment I do this, and you can see because we're doing this on a raw image, we're not really losing quality. So you're not getting that bad look that sometimes you can get with a JPEG image because it doesn't have that much data as a raw image. So, you know, this is looking pretty good. And I'm going to add some vibrance because we had some beautiful colors because of the sunset. You know, all the reds and nice. Of course, you don't want to completely bump it all the way up like this. Then it starts to look slightly unreal. A lot of people do that also. Uh, but let's say I'm just going to do it a little just about this much and you can you know keep on going absolutely make your image you know however you want it to but you can see that I think this is um, uh, you know absolutely fine so to just show you the before this was the before and this is after so this kind of image is you know it pops out way more and this just looks fantastic and we've been able to do this because we're just editing a raw image so that's the advantage of shooting images. Now, the important thing is that I'm just going to press Control A, which is going to select all the images here. So because, of course, we don't want to do this to all the 500 odd images, and that would take forever. So what I do is I just press Control A. So you can see that it just selects everything, right? And then I just have to click this button called Sync. So it's going to ask me, what all do you want to sync? So I want to sync everything. Whatever I did with this image, I want to sync it you know, the same effect to all the images. So once I click on synchronize, what you'll find is that Lightroom will start this process of just, 
you know, I'm, I'm not sure if you can just notice this, but if you look at these thumbnails, they're kind of changing. That's because it's syncing the same effects that we've done with these sliders to every image. So you can see, it just keeps on doing that. So it takes a bit of time for this to this process to finish because of, because of course, you know, it's processing all these images, uh, the 500 plus images, and it's just putting the same effects. And after some time, uh, you know, you can see this thing going on here. So it's just applying that to every image. And after some time, uh, you know, once it finishes the process, you know, usually there'll be like a box which will open up, which will just, it'll ask you where do you want to export all these edited images. So you can select a separate folder for all this and that's where all your edited images will be stored. So of course I've already done this process. So if I just go up here, I have this folder called edited where all these edited images are stored. So we've got the best out of these 524 images and in this folder, once Lightroom finishes, you know, all these images basically came here. Of course, I've done this because I've already created the time lapse, and I, of course, don't want to make you wait till the time it syncs everything. But after that, after the syncing process, you just export uh, the images, and that process also takes a lot of time. That's another reason why I'm not showing you uh, exactly the export process. It's just very simple to understand. But basically, we've got this folder where now we have all these perfect images ready to go into our video editing software. So next step will be that we'll be putting all these images together in the video editing software, which will ultimately form the time lapse. So what I'm gonna do now is that I'm gonna go to Premiere Pro. All right, so this is Adobe Premiere Pro, which is our video editing software. You have already seen this, like a glimpse of it in the uh, slow motion videos and in the synchronizing of our sound and video. And of course, we have a separate section on this. And one option you have is uh, that you can also go through that section first, the editing section, if you're the kind of person who likes to feel comfortable with everything before, uh, you know, seeing this time-lapse edit. But to be frank, it's not that tough. And even if you see that section later on, it should be fine if you're able to just keep your focus on the time-lapse part. So how everything works is very similar to any other software. I'm just going to start a new project by going to File. And let's say I'm just, I'm just going to call it Time-lapse Editing. We'll also be seeing later on in the dedicated section how to create a new project and then we'll be editing like a proper video. So most of those things will be covered later on, but you're gonna kind of get this look. Don't be too worried about this. We'll slightly talk about this later on. Um, so right now, all you just have to just understand is we just have to import stuff, whatever we wanna import, and then the editing takes place on this timeline here. And usually, you're gonna be importing your videos and audio and then you just drag it here and start editing it like we'll be seeing in the editing section but right now this time is an exception because we have to we have to actually import images so i've you just have to go to the folder where you exported all the edited images and then what you do is uh, you don't have to select all the images though you can do that uh, but a better option is to just click on the first image here and then just make sure that this uh, checkbox of image sequence is ticked so, and then you just click on open. What that, what that will do is, you'll see it here, that Adobe Premiere Pro will just take all those 524 images in this case and just put them as one file, like one after the other, like a video. So you can see from this thumbnail, it's almost, you know, kind of running like a video. Otherwise, you can also import them separately, then you drag them all here and then merge them together. It's just a longer process. So this one is relatively shorter. And then once that is the case, you simply just drag this uh, video, or in this case, the sequence of images onto this timeline here. And you can see that this is all set to go. I can, you know, just go here. Oops, I can just go to file and click on export and then you can just export this as a video but you don't want to do that right now because there's just one thing that you'll have to change in this case which is that if I go to this um, section which says sequence or this menu which says sequence and I click on sequence settings, sequence settings just means that what are the current settings that this video is working at? Like what is the, what are the settings that Premiere Pro is using you know, for this video? And how it usually works is that when you import a video or an audio and when you you know, drag that video onto the timeline, Premiere Pro is just simply gonna take the settings that that video was shot at. For example, usually we've been shooting our videos at 
1080p so it's just going to take in 1920 1080p and the frame rate that you're shooting in this in our case in this video course we've been using the 24 uh, frame rate but in this case because we are uh, you know importing these images and dragging on them here uh, premiere pro is taking the resolution as the size of the image now we're dealing with raw images from a dslr which are 6000 by 4000 so it's taking in that now we can go ahead and export this at 6000 by 4000 4, also but the issue is that it's unnecessarily going to be a huge video the size is going to be massive because you're literally like exporting a 6k video so unless until you're watching this time lapse on a massive screen it's not going to be of any benefit so we're going to stick to our standard resolution that we've been working at which is the 1920 by 1080 which is your 1080p so i'm just going to change this and of course the frame rate that we want we've been usually working at 24 frames rate so i'm just going to do that and just notice when i press on ok what's going to happen here is in the preview window you can see that this just scales up right so this kind of zooms in because the image is much bigger, but right now the resolution that we've selected is much smaller. So what we have to do is, before we can export this as a video, we have to just scale this down. And how you do that is, you select uh, your sequence here by just clicking on it, so it'll get highlighted. Let's go to effect controls here. And then you have the scale option. We'll again be seeing uh, these things later on in the editing section, so don't worry too much about it. We're basically kind of making this smaller so that it fits in our 1920 by 1080p resolution that's all we're doing so i'm just going to click on scale and then i'm just going to press the down key and just reduce this number you can even do just you know type in the number but just pressing the down key on the keyboard and i just have to do this till the time it fits in so you can see at around 32 it fits in properly and this when i export this this is going to be a proper video which is going to just you know run like this all these images together and this is going to be at your full HD resolution, which will be just fantastic for us. So the exact process of exporting is covered later on, how we actually export a video. So in the editing section, uh, you'll be seeing how to export a video. So that's ready to view, but basically it's very easy. Uh, but the point right now is that once you export this, we're going to get our time lapse out of the image that we, uh, images that we shot. And this is going to run at 24 frames per second. So each of those 24 images is going to form one second of this video and it's going to run roughly for around 21 seconds so that's how simple the process of shooting and editing a time lapse is do give it a shot it's a lot of fun i hope you enjoyed this video i'm going to see you in the next one bye for now